It is essential platform to exchange experience, to cooperate, and this role is ongoing. I'm speaking about assuring world stability. Today I will give a presentation on the main issues of stability and security. The first thing, the pandemic of COVID coincided with transformation of the situation in the world, and humanity is closer and closer. Humanity has the same destiny. Only cooperation and close work will help us overcome the existing challenges and to have a bright future. Currently, we are observing changes we have never seen in the last century. Changes are very rapid, and we see that coronavirus is spreading. It is a serious threat to people's health, and it is also damaging economies. Instability and uncertainty are growing in the world. Uh, the, time, the times are very turbulent, and today, focusing on that common destiny of hum human humanity is in line with the spirit of the era, and it is also in line with the interests of all countries. The pandemic has hit the whole world. We need to get united and to ensure mutual trust and help. That was a real hit. The world has been suffering from coronavirus for almost a year and a half, and the world is to face fighting this infection. China is helping a lot in world cooperation in what concerns prevention and control of the epidemic. China has provided a big volume of anti-epidemiological devices, medical devices, to 170 countries in the world. These devices, they include medicines, vaccination, and so on. This is humanitarian aid. At the same time, some countries are still driven by stigmatization of the fight against the epidemic, and they are spreading the so-called political virus in the context of the fight against the virus. No country can be safe and feel safe until the virus is destroyed everywhere in the world. In its history, humanity has faced numerous challenges and disasters, and humanity has always managed to overcome them. And this time we will win as well. That is a sure thing, if we unite in our fight against the virus. The world water is facing serious challenges and threats. We must defend the principles of justice and impartiality. Today, the world is characterized as disorderly. There are different disorderly phenomena and situations. And the reason for that is that, one, power that has forgotten about everything and that is only thinking in terms of the Cold War imposes the rules of force hegemony and unilateralism. This country imposes its rules and its will on the other countries. It interferes in the internal affairs of other countries. And with or without reason, this country deploys the policy of containment, blocking, and separation. This country introduces sanctions as well. It manipulates public opinion and rolls out color revolutions in order to replace legit legitimate authorities and to substitute powers in different countries. There is manipulation of public opinion in order to discredit other countries and through its 
technological advance, advances, this country is implementing monopoly in order to contain the development of other countries. We are to counteract it. We are to protect the international system together with the UN. We need to protect the world order based on international law, and we need to support the UN central role in international affairs. We need to ensure justice in international relations. My third point is that various security risks are constantly increasing. We need to adhere to the principles of consultation, mutual understanding, and peaceful coexistence. Today's world is not peaceful. There is competition and a ri rivalry between powers, and it is growing. Regional conflicts, local wars are always there. In the context of pandemic, terrorism, hacker attacks, such security concerns are still making themselves well felt. The international security environment is becoming ever more serious and interlinked. But on the same time, an, a certain country which calls itself the world's policeman, the world's police officer, wants everything except for peace and stability. It creates different alliances, blocks. Uh, it deploys the policy of confrontation and military threats can be felt everywhere. The Chinese side belie believes that by mutual consultations and by discussing these issues, we can resolve all such conflicts at the world level and we can adhere to the concept of overall sustainable security and we can work out our united understanding, thus creating stable peace in the world. The next thing I would like to talk about is peace and development. This is a common tendency of the world and a common desire of peoples. China con con contributes to that actively and promotes common development. The late motive of our era is peace and development, and we face trends such as openness, cooperation, mutual benefit. China, being a responsible large country, uh, is unwaveringly on the right side of history, and it is constantly working for the progress of mankind. It plays the role of peace builder in the world. It drives global development and protects the world order. In this context, we are ready to contribute even more to the prosperity of the world. China's development is done for the benefit of the Chinese people, for national rebirth and world harmony, peace in the world. China will not retreat in face of crisis. China is not only taking care of itself. China embraces the spirit of shared prosperity. China is facing challenges with courage and has made tremendous achievements in fight against the virus. China also makes progress in economic development on the background of the pandemic, in issues of fight with poverty, and also makes contribution to the world anti-epidemic fight and economic recovery of the country and of the economy, both of China and of the other countries. China has seen a real breakthrough in technological areas, such as development of the space uh, ship, Mars exploration. China's uh, contribution to the world's development has exceeded 30 percent. Today, China is a leading trading partner for more than 120 countries in the region and in the whole world. The joint construction of the One Belt and One Road shows strong momentum and a lot of achievements. Currently, 
We are celebrating 100 years of the Communist Party of China. We are celebrating it this year. A comprehensive middle-income society has already been formed in China, and now we are on the path of modernizing and developing a social state. China is now forming a new architectonic of growth with an emphasis of, on internal development of economics, mutual promotion, and internal and external economic activities. I would also like to say that we make more efforts for international justice in the context of globalization. No country can act as just a beholder of human development, and no one uh, can play the role of decider of other countries' fates. Global problems are to be solved collectively through consultation, and we stick to principles of multilateralism. We are all for the concept of shared construction of peace, shared usage of resources and possibilities. We are after building a more fair and rational world order. China has joined almost all the world's intergovernmental organizations and has joined more than 600 multilateral conventions and concluded more than 28,000 bilateral treaties in different areas. Everything on the planet belongs to all mankind, and this is the only truth we can voice. China will always be a staunch advocate of international justice and human progress. My third point is that we are ready to play a significant role and fulfill our basic function in ensuring the common security of the world. The Chinese civilization has always cherished peace and places the principle of peace and harmony above everything else. The pursuit of peace has long been one of the main trends of the Chinese nation development. We have never provoked military conflicts. We have never invaded on foreign lands. No matter how developed China is, it will never claim hegemony, expansion. China is following the path of peaceful development and adheres to a defensive military policy. Such decision is and remains unchanged and is unquestioned. China has dispatched a total of 38 batches of humanitarian aid, of humanitarian missions, and more than 120 ships of convoy. This was part of the UN activities and convoying of more than 7,000 Chinese and foreign vessels was assured. China, the Chinese army, will always be the protector of the world peace. Also, we are steadfastly defending the state's indigenous interests. Taiwan is integral part of the territory of the Chinese Republic, and integrity of China is a noble national duty and a historical trend which has always been there and which remains unquestionable. Taiwan's independence will not end well, and outside interference will not come to any, anything good. The Chinese army will never allow Taiwan to separate from China. Some of the malicious attacks on China on the Xinjiang issue have uh, been a case of denigration of our country and uh, can be put in a political context. Since late 2018, more than 1,400 people have visited Xinjiang, including UN officials, foreign diplomats, correspondents, and so on. They all saw the real situation in Xinjiang. They, all, they were all convinced that Xinjiang has normal social governance and development. People are happy there and there are no so-called human rights violations there. And 
there is no religious repression or forced labor, not to mention genocide. This is just a blatant lie. The issues of Xiangang, Tibet, the South China Sea, they are all China's core interests. Uh, they are about our domestic affairs, and we are strongly against any attempts to interfere in these issues and infringe on China, Chinese interests. Another important issue I would like to dwell on is global security. It is now facing serious and complex challenges and threats. We need to deepen cooperation uh, in the area of security to form a jointly built structure on the principles based on the principles of shared construction and usage of world resources. Global challenges require global responses. Only by addressing challenges together we can ensure joint development and joint future. The Chinese army, together with the armed forces of other countries, is ready to strengthen links, communication and coordination and to enhance strategic mutual trust and to guarantee the development and prosperity of all countries. Confidence and trust in military sphere at a high level is something which really links us in our relations. The Chinese army is in contact with the armies of more than 150 countries, and this connection is ever-growing. The circle of our friends is expanding. The friendship between China and Russia is cohesive and, and unbreakable. We are getting at a higher level and we are strengthening China-Russia comprehensive partnership and strategic interaction, which play a pivotal role in ensuring peace and stability in the world and maintaining global security. China and the European Union should form a common position and maintain the spirit of strate strategic partnership, promote dialogue and uh, cooperate on the principles of mutual benefit. They need to overcome obstacles and eliminate differences together. Speaking of the USA, the Chinese side is willing to work with the US side again on the basis of the principles of non conflict, mutual respect, cooperation, we are ready to strengthen our contacts, to eliminate differences, to expand cooperation, and to promote the healthy and stable development of China-US relations. However, this requires the USA to take practical steps towards China. China hopes for a return to normal Chinese-American relations and our determination to uphold our state sovereignty, security, and national development interests is unwavering. We will continue to develop military cooperation with ASEAN and neighboring countries, including countries in the Middle East, Africa, and Latin America. And we will also increase the level of trust and practical cooperation. Next, improving cooperation platforms. Against the backdrop of the epidemic, we will be able to maintain close communication using different means, such as uh, telephone, correspondence, video communication, and others. The uh, Chinese side is ready to continue to participate in multilateral cooperation mechanisms to continue to take part in the Moscow Conference on International Security, SMOA+, format, Shangri-La Dialogue, and others. We are ready to consult on all security issues. The current year uh, marks the 20th anniversary of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And we are ready to strengthen cooperation with the organization's member countries in many spheres. We are ready to do that with all observers and dialogue partners. The Chinese side attaches great importance to the practice of international joint military exercises and exchange of experience in troop building. We are ready to do capacity building and to counteract different challenges together. Currently, the Chinese side is considering holding another Beijing Xiangshan Forum. Information about this will be provided in due course. 
We are also ready to provide quality solutions to security issues. Overcoming the epidemic is the primary task of the international community. We are to provide mutual aid and support and deepen, deepen cooperation in the fight against this disastrous epidemic. The Chinese side has made efforts to ensure the equitable distribution of vaccines and to assure access of a bigger number of countries to these important medical tools to fight the infection. The Chinese army is also ready to provide support to different countries in the world. It is developing cooperation in peacekeeping activities, fight against terrorism, humanitarian aid, and humanitarian rescue. We will contribute to cooperation and partnership in the world. That is all. Thank you for your attention.